In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to the EasySoft 7 Eaton Pico PLC program. We'll start off by opening up the program and then selecting whichever Eaton Pico PLC you are using. In this case, we're using the Easy E4 UC12 RC1. This can be identified on the front of the PLC. The model number is labeled right there. So we will drag out the PLC that matches the model number of the PLC we're using. We're going to select whichever firmware we're using. That can be checked through the menu on the Eaton PLC if required. We're using the firmware uh, 1.3. That's where it has been flashed to. I'm going to select OK. Now, um, if this has been connected to before, all of this information should hopefully be set. If not, there are a number of different ways that that needs to be set, giving the PLC its proper IP address and uh, then connecting to the PLC. Ours is set, so we're going to leave that here. Then we're going to go down to program and then we're going to select what program methods we're going to use. And for this video, we're going to use the Easy Device Program or EDP. Hit OK. And I'm just going to show you how to input a very simple PLC program. So we're going to come up here to circuit defined elements. Got our input right here. Drop this down. This is our input and I'll just label this push button one and you can see the name appears here. You have the choice when you grab an input to make it a make or a break logic. Now we're going to make it a make meaning it goes true when the switch is closed, then we'll grab an output here and this will be identified as Q1 and we'll just put a light one here. And now I need to connect the logic here. I need to connect the input and the output here because again, this is just a very simple program. I want when push button one is activated to turn on light one. So I come up here to draw connections. I'm going to click and hold and drag this over to the output that I want. And in this case, so when this goes true, this will turn on. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a second rung here so we can see the difference between a make and a break input. So I'm going to grab this input here. I'm going to select number two. So this would be the input that is wired into input one on the Eaton PLC. Comments, I'm going to make this push button two. Grab an output, change this to light to number two. So this would go to whatever output is wired to output two. In this case, we're going to call this light two. Hit enter. And now another way you can actually input the uh, connection points is by just clicking on each spot. This is slower but sometimes it's nice if you need to make smaller, quicker connections if you have multiple inputs in series. So then I'm going to come over to uh, push button two. I'm going to select it and I'm going to change this to a break connection. So what that means is this will be true until it closes. And so this will make a normally open switch act normally closed and vice versa. So now that I have a basic program in here, what EasySoft 7 program allows is for me to simulate the program and see how it will operate once I send it over to the PLC itself. So I'll click simulate. I'll come over here and hit the start simulation button. Now notice my Q2 is red and my Q1 is black. The red indicates that this is true. So now when I come to push button one and I select it, this goes red. And since this is the only connection being made from here to the output, the light lights up. This would be me closing the switch. Then if I come to push button two and I select it, it turns off. That's because this is a break input and that allows the machine to be true when the input is technically false or in the off position. Really, it's not sending voltage to the PLC's input. 
Now in this simulation mode, there's, I can do a couple other things here. I can actually double click here instead of using the simulator buttons here. If I double click it, it will change the state of the inputs there. Okay. Now, if I come back to program, I can modify this any way that I need to. So for example, I could come here, drop another input here, make this input two, all right? These, now notice that these two inputs have the same address, but this has the line over it making it a break, and this is a make, and so they will switch each time. And now you can see here that this input two and input one are in series, so now if I go back to the simulation, start the simulation, and what I can do is I can come here, I can activate push button one, push button two, Q1 came on, Q2 came off, because this went from being a true statement to a false statement, where this one, when I deactivate either of these, it will go false. So now that I have a program that's functioning, I need to send it over to the PLC or I need to download it to the PLC. To do this, I'm gonna select communication, so if this is your first time connecting to the PLC, we go to IP device search, select new search, give it a minute to go out and look on the network to see what's there. Now, if this doesn't work, there can be a number of steps that are required to go out and get the PC connected to the PLC, and there are other videos on that, or if you're in school, you can ask your instructor to help you identify the, the networking problem. So once I've identified this, I'm gonna hit close. Then I can come here and I can see all of the latest searches and when those were created. So then I'm going to select on online. It will connect the PC to the PLC. Then I'm gonna come and select program configuration. And now I want to download the program that I created to the PLC. If I wanted to take the program from the PLC to the PC, I would select this right here. So I'm gonna come here, select PC to device configuration and let it run through all of its protocols. Then I can put the PLC into run mode here. And if my inputs and outputs are wired correctly, my program should now be set to operate the way it's designed. So let's take a look. So now you can see that output two is activated and I'm gonna activate switch two. And you can see here on the screen of both the PLC and the computer, that when I activate it, output two is turning off when input two is activated. Now if I come here and I activate switch one, you can see it go true here, but nothing happened to Q2 or Q1. But when I activate Q1, two turns off and one is activated. And the input and the outputs that are associated with that, if they're wired properly, will go true. That is an introduction to EasySoft software for the Pico Eaton PLC. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.